Right. So uh, let me actually do this much. Uh, so I do think the most uh, mistake proof way to do this question is using Kirchhoff's loop rule. So let me write down the loop rule equation at least so that you can see that application here. So, um, so because uh, yeah, real noticing that the these two batteries oppose each other, uh, I think you do have to be more careful. Otherwise, um, and, you know, and you would have figured out that mistake by the time you do part A. So, uh, so this is what I'm looking at. So, um, in application of Kirchhoff's rules or Kirchhoff. <laughs> Never gonna be able to pronounce that name, right? Kirchhoff's hopes rules. You can see that um, these the orientation of these two batteries are a bit unusual. So let me show you. Um, so this circuit has no junctions, so I'm not gonna be applying junction rule. It does have one loop, so let me define my loop here. Starting from here, I'm going to imagine going around the circuit this way, and then coming back here. So that's my loop. So the loop rule equation, which says sum of all the changes in voltage around the loop is equal to zero. It gets written out this way. Oh, oh I should have defined the uh, current. So um, since I already defined the loop, let me just uh, define my current as going this way. And writing it down, I realized looking at these values that the actual, um, actual current is actually gonna go the other way. That's fine. Once you do the solution, you will find that in the way I'm writing the equation, the current will come out as negative. Then you figure, okay, the actual current goes the other way. So for the answer here, you uh, give the absolute value. So you, that's the correction you can do after having done all the solutions. I'm not gonna worry about it too much. So now what I need to do here is write down the loop rule equation. So I'm going across each element one at a time, collecting these voltage changes. So as I go across this battery, I collect a positive voltage change of plus V1. And this is the reason. I'm going from the negative terminal to the positive terminal of the battery. So my voltage change is gonna be positive because I'm going from negative to positive. Now, as I go across this register, I'm going in the same direction as the current. So I'm going to have a voltage drop. So it's gonna be minus I R one. Now you might be asking and wondering, hey, but what if, if the current actual current flows the other way, then am I not going against the current? So the only thing that matters here is the consistency. So I'm going with the current in the direction I labeled. And you know, in the end, when I find the current to be negative, then the negative sign in current will cancel out this minus sign, so everything will work out. The, the thing to be careful here is to be consistent. So being consistent with this direction, let me write down minus IR2, minus IR3, and then now here, I'm going across this battery from the positive to negative terminal. So I'm going to be collecting a negative voltage change of the same magnitude as the battery, minus V2. And then let me keep going, minus I R4, minus I R5 is equal to zero. You have a single equation with a single unknown I. When you solve for it, you'll get a negative answer because V1 minus V2 is negative. And, uh, you know, just take the absolute value and, you know, figure, okay, the actual current flows this way. Um, so yeah, once you find the current, then the rest should be easy. Now, in, so this is why we need to do this. In terms of the power supplied by the batteries, so you are going to cal want to calculate the net power. And I will say that for this part, the simplest way that'll make sure that you don't make any mistakes is to add up all the powers dissipated by the registers. Because when you do that, that's going to ensure that you are counting all the power that goes out of the circuit and energy is conserved. And the only place where power can come in are these batteries. And then it's gonna be, um, you know, it's gonna be right. And uh, what you will find that is that this total power is less than the power you would have found from 24 volts times the current. And the reason for that is um, 
so actually, as the current flows, this battery, if it's a rechargeable battery, it's actually gaining power. It's not losing power. So, um, so this, yeah, yeah. So, um, so uh, calculating power this way will ensure that you don't make mistakes. Um, there are, are other ways to calculate power, but if you simply try to use P is equal to V times I, you will have to worry a little because you know you have two batteries, so which V 